The last couple of days, I've had some pretty in-depth conversations with a few of you folks who have reached out asking about the housing market and if now is a good time to buy. Now, it's a great question. It's been coming up a lot lately. So naturally, I wanted to make a video about it and share some things that are actually driving the real estate market. You know, there's a lot of economic factors, a lot of things going on. I'm not gonna get into the whole entire economics here. We'll put some resources in this video if you wanna get really, really deep and nerd out on the analytics and data behind it. But I pulled out some major extracts that I think are really important to summarize what the housing market's doing, why we're seeing such a competitive market in most major markets, and that's not all of them. But I think it's really interesting to share, you know, these facts because we hear from the news, there's a lot of doom and gloom, right? And I can tell you right now from being on the front lines of fighting for clients, trying to get offers accepted and being successful in doing so, that it is not doom and gloom. It's a complete opposite of doom and gloom. And you might be asking yourself like, well, how is this even possible? Like everybody's saying that we're in a, we're in a recession, the housing market's going to crash. And on the other hand, there's multiple offers and people fighting tooth and nail to buy a home. So I know this video will shed some light on exactly what's going on. So stick around. And if you are in the market and you're already searching for a home, make sure you do stick around at the end, because I'm going to share with you exactly what you need to do and what you need to equip your tool belt with to make your offer stand out, get your offer accepted and get the home of your dreams. So stick around because we're getting after it right now. Okay, so it's no secret that interest rates are up, housing prices are up, and demand is at an all-time high. Now, all of these factors coming together on the surface will make us think like, okay, well, prices are going up, interest rates are going up, demand is at an all-time high, something's naturally got to give. And it might, there might be a serious event that happens in the future that causes some turbulence in the real estate market. But that has to be a major, major event. What we're seeing right now, and I'm gonna share some data with you, you know, if we really look at the big question, like, will that event happen? Will the real estate market crash? Um, I don't have a crystal ball, okay? I, I'm not gonna predict exactly when that's gonna happen or if that's gonna happen, but what we do know right now of why the market is experiencing such high demand, and it might continue to be this way, you know, for the foreseeable future until some magical event happens, um, is because of the data I'm gonna share with you. Now, I'm gonna pull up in a report from realtor.com and I really like this, this was just released. Um, it's the only report that includes May data. So we're looking at May data, um, it's released first week in June and most other sources don't even have this data released yet. So National Association of Realtors, NAR, they won't come out with this data for another three weeks. You know, CoreLogic, which is another uh, good data source that we pull data from, they won't have this data released until three weeks. Their analysts are still working on it. So Realtor.com worked quickly to get this summarized and out because they know that time is of the essence in this market. So I appreciate that from Realtor.com. A couple of things that I wanna point out here is we're gonna be looking at the pre-pandemic years, so 17, 18, 19. And when you hear a lot of this, you know, hey, we're, we're down, we're up from last year, year over year, and you know, things are, are getting a little bit better, or they're getting a little bit worse. It's really kind of short-sighted, in my opinion, because what happened over the last two years, from tw well, three years, from 2020 to, to present, that was a unprecedented times. Hey, that is a market that we've never seen before, right? So we call that the pandemic. <laughs> the the pre-pandemic data was a normal market. So 18, 17, 18, and 19 are all gonna be looked at in this data. So I think it's really interesting to note that because you know when you look at the data from 2020, 2021, 2022, it's wildly different and we're comparing kind of apples to oranges, but we wanna look at the pre-pandemic just to get a barometer of like where was it at. So a couple of things I wanna point out here on the data side is currently there were 21.5% more homes for sale in May compared to the same time in 2022. But despite the year over year growth, there are still fewer homes available compared to 2019 and the previous years. And you can see that from the chart. Also, the total listings are down slightly from last year, but they are down quite a bit from pre pandemic levels. And that's the really important thing to note. Even though listings are down, we also are way down from pre pandemic levels. And so you can see that in the chart and it's quite a big significant jump. So next we're gonna look at pre-pandemic versus today on where we're at. And this kind of summarizes everything of, of what I'm trying to get at and drives my point home even further. 
you know, so the chart that we're looking at is, you know, for May 2023, um, this is the regional statistics versus the pre pandemic from 2017 to 2019 of the 50 largest metro uh, areas combined. Now, I'm going to focus on the Midwest because this is our market. So active listings versus pre pandemic, we are down 54.6%. New listings versus pre-pandemic, we are down 32%, 32.5%. The median list price versus pre-pandemic is up 31.4%. That's, that's a lot of appreciation happening in that short amount of time. Median list price from per square footage, pre-pandemic, up 41.8%. Average days on market is down 7%. And the price reduced share versus pre-pandemic is six percentage points. So all of this being said, you know, we, we see that the active listings are down. The new listings coming to market are down. Median home values are up. Square footage values are up. Average days on market are trending downward. So this is all pointing to a supply and demand issue. Okay, we, we don't have enough supply to meet the demand. Which brings me to my next point, which is this concept called the lock effect. Now, the lock effect basically states that most homeowners are not going to move. They're locked into their home. Now, the statistic that's really interesting here is that 90% of homeowners in the U.S. have an interest rate below at or below 5%. So that lock effect is essentially saying that 90% of homeowners can't make heads or tails of moving because of the interest rates today and the affordability of jumping from whatever their payment is to a newer payment that is either gonna be equal or more money than what they're at today, depending on if you're upgrading or downgrading. Now, for those reasons, you know, sellers are in the lock effect, right? It's almost like analysis paralysis where you can't move because it, it just doesn't make sense to you. Like it's this spaghetti in your brain where like, I, I don't know what to do, right? Like, I don't know what's gonna happen. So a lot of homeowners, and if you're in that situation right now, it's not uncommon, right? And that's what's causing a lot of this uh, compression in the market. Okay, so let's summarize really quickly. You know, we have the lock effect, which we know is causing less inventory to come to market. We already know starting that there's less inventory, you know, listings are down active inventory is down in the market almost 50 per, almost more than 50 percent in the midwest and prices are going up so this really becomes a question of affordability for most people looking to buy a home or move laterally or, or downsize upgrade so the question becomes is how does this shake loose right what needs to happen to get this market moving at a more equilibrium for most buyers and sellers well, naturally, if you're looking at you know supply and demand, economics 101, we would need more supply. Okay, so we need more supply, which means more sellers need to be willing to sell their home in order for us to get more supply to satisfy the demand. Now, I don't think that's gonna happen given where we are with interest rates. So the other natural thing that's gonna cause more people to enter into the market, and this could get even worse, right? So I wanna warn you, the market could get worse. We could see a big, big insurgence of buyers come into the market and even get more competitive. Now, if more inventory came to the market, that would relieve a lot of the demand pressure. Okay, that's a good thing. But if interest rates drop, that is going to bring more people into the market than we've ever seen before. There is a huge population of folks in Gen Z and millennials that are sitting on the sidelines waiting to pounce. This is the largest first time home buyers population we have ever seen, and they're all ready to buy homes. So as soon as something like an interest rate drop happens, we are going to see a massive introduction of new home buyers coming in and gobbling up whatever supply is actually left. So in that case, things could get a lot worse, right? So when you look at all these factors, you start asking yourself, like, what is the likelihood of one of these two things happening? Are we going to see more supply? or are we gonna see an interest rate drop? Now, what happens normally in recessions is interest rates start coming down, okay? So they, they go up, causes us into this recession, and then they're naturally gonna start coming down to alleviate some of that pressure. Now, if that happens and history repeats itself, we're gonna see a lot more home buyers enter the market. 
Okay. So if you do have questions about any of this, you know, drop those questions down below. I'd love to hear how you think about the market. You know, what are you seeing in your market? Um, is now a good time to buy for you? You know, we just welcome questions and, you know, good healthy debate on where we're going in this market because it's valuable for everybody. You know, I'm certainly not here touting to be a guru on the market, but what we're seeing behind the scenes is not lining up with what you're hearing on the news. And I wanna be a good resource to actually provide value in what's going on with your home search. All right, so we're gonna get into how to be a boss in today's market and get your offer accepted with your tool belt full of all the tips and tricks that you need to navigate today's market. But if we're meeting here for the first time, my name is Eric Meldrum. I make videos just like this about all things Metro Detroit, the lifestyle, the real estate market, and everything in between. I'm also a licensed real estate professional. I've helped hundreds of people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in Metro Detroit. And we wanna help you do just that. So whether you're making a move in one month or one year from now, go ahead and give us a call. Shoot us a text, send us an email, or my favorite, schedule that Zoom call. We can meet face-to-face -face and walk you through the city and answer any questions you have, match you up with the ideal lifestyle. So if this information is helpful, go ahead and subscribe, tap that little bell so you're the first to learn about the current market and every time we put out a new video, just like this. Okay, so getting your offer accepted in today's market is no easy thing to do. I know this firsthand from somebody who's written hundreds and hundreds of offers, you know, for our clients, getting your offer accepted is an art. Now, not every agent is created equal when it comes to this, not knowing, you know, what to write in offers versus, you know, how to negotiate with the seller. These are things that take experience. Okay, and I didn't learn these overnight. These are years and years and years of experience, understanding what makes sellers tick, how to negotiate, and ultimately understanding the concept behind knowing what the seller's needs are. Okay, and this is gonna, we're gonna focus a lot on that because in this market, you know, if your agent is not having conversations, is not digging for information for you, and bringing that back to make heads or tails of how to win in today's market, Trust me, you're at a disservice, right? From the get-go. You have a, a fighting chance if you take control and get paired up with somebody like our team who knows what it takes to get offers accepted and is gonna fight tooth and nail. Now, I know everybody's not gonna work with me. I'm not an idiot, you know, so for those of you who do have questions, drop those in the comments below. We love to answer those, or better yet, just reach out, you know, connect with us. We'll take you through all of this, and we take all of our clients through this when we get set up and start your home search. So what I'm gonna share with you is really kind of look at this as like building your tool belt, okay? There's certain things that are gonna be necessary in the offer, and some things that are gonna be needed versus not needed, and you're gonna know when to pull those tools out of your tool belt and exercise those in the offer depending on the situation that you're in okay so not every offer needs all of these things um, but you will know they are there when you need them okay i'd rather have a tool in my tool belt than just to be flying blind you know on a uh you know whatever we're working on i can't come up with a good analogy um to, to reference tools so you just don't want to be flying blind uh, when going into this you know offer situation you want to have your tool belt laid out and you want to know what's there and when to use it so that's what we're going to talk about all right so i think it's important to note that we're in a seller's market so each of these type of markets are going to warrant different tools coming out buyer's market versus seller's market and so on and so forth we're in a seller's market right now. So a lot of what I'm gonna share with you is geared towards getting sellers to look at your offer or being competitive above the competition when we have multiple offer situations. So first and foremost, we're gonna look at sales price. Okay, sales price is not the end all be all. all right? And I wanna really stress this. You know, most people think, oh, if I just write an offer, it's the highest price and the seller can see that, I'm gonna get my offer accepted. Well, I can assure you that's not the case. Sell sales price, does not always win offers. Okay? It certainly looks good on paper, but you gotta remember, if you're getting a mortgage, okay, the mortgage is going to be contingent on an appraisal of the home. Now, if that home doesn't appraise, what do we do? Well, the sellers are gonna be expecting that high purchase price that you offered them. And if you don't have any assurances that they're gonna get that same price, they're less inclined to move forward with that. They may move forward with somebody that actually has assurances, which brings me to my next point, which is an appraisal guarantee. Okay, so this is tool number one, okay, the appraisal guarantee. Now, how this works is in that circumstance where you are offering more or over asking, you can assure the sellers that they're gonna get that price by doing what's called an appraisal guarantee. 
Okay, so you're predetermining how the outcome of the appraisal is going to happen before it even happens. Now, if that appraisal comes in at value, let's just use a, a $400,000 house and you offered 450 on it. Now you can offer an appraisal guarantee at any denomination between that, or you can do a full appraisal guarantee, meaning you'll cover whatever the difference is. So let's say that the offer was for 450, the list price was 400 and the appraisal comes in at 425. In the offer, you said you would cover $15,000 of the appraisal shortfall. So in that case where the appraisal comes back in at 425, you're gonna get your mortgage loan for 425,000. The bank won't loan you any more than that. And you are gonna to have to bring an additional $15,000 to the table, making the final sales price of the home 440. Okay, so let me walk through that again. The appraisal guarantee is $15,000. Your offer is for 450 and the appraisal value came in at 425, okay? The mortgage company is only gonna give you the, the money for 425. You are also gonna have to bring an additional $15,000 to the table, making the final sales price of the home $440,000, okay? So now the sellers might not be too thrilled that you know they, they lost out on $10,000, but I can assure you it's way better than them going back to market. They knew how that appraisal shortfall was going to happen and they agreed to it, right? They took the risk with you. So the second tool that you need to know about are the terms of the offer. Now, not everything is contingent on the sales price. Again, sales price does not always win offers. It's a whole rounded picture of how you're approaching the offer. So terms are things like your closing date, right? What contingencies do you have in your offer? Okay, so if you're flexible on closing date, you know, that could be a positive for you. If you can do a short closing date, if that's important to the seller, that could be a positive for you as well. If you can extend that out, give them occupancy, you know, that might be a positive. So closing date is one of those, those things in the terms that you really wanna pay attention to and understand what the seller's needs are. Now, of the contingencies, you have the appraisal contingency and the inspection contingency. So you can choose to waive an inspection contingency. You'll never hear those words come out of my mouth to any of my clients, but you can certainly waive that option, okay? So if you also wanna put language in there to alleviate some risk for the seller in the inspection, such as, you know, hey, we're not looking to nickel and dime you on the inspection. This is for informational purposes only, right? Asterisks al along this, consult your, your real estate uh, agent, um, you know, this is not legal advice by any means, do not use these clauses in your own contracts, but you can also put language in there. We have the language already teed up, ready to go for any situation that, that our buyers choose to move forward with. The third tool that you need in your tool belt is understanding what your options are for post-closing occupancy to the seller. Now in today's market, because it's a seller's market, sellers are also potentially buying a home. Okay, and they may need a little bit of time between selling their home and closing on their next one, and that's considered occupancy. Now, it's very customary right now because so many people are just offering up occupancy to offer that free occupancy, okay? Normally, you would do like a rent back or a lease back on the contract, but most buyers in today's market are just saying, you know what, I want the house, I don't wanna compete with anybody else, just have the occupancy for free because I don't want that to be the determining factor of why you don't select our offer. All right, the fourth tool that's super helpful in today's market is what we call an escalation clause. Now, the escalation clause is a fantastic tool if you know you're in a multiple offer situation and you have no feedback from the listing agent or the sellers on where offers are, you're kind of going in blind, and that happens from time to time. Not every listing agent is gonna share every single detail, nor are they obligated to do so. So with an escalation clause, you can literally write your offer and how you write it is, hey, we're gonna offer the X, but in the event that there's another offer higher than ours, we'll increase our offer by X number of dollars up to a certain max. Okay, so let's walk through that. At 400,000, your offer's at 400,000 with an escalation up to 450 in increments of $2,500. Okay, so which means if anybody else offers on that property between 400 and 450, we are gonna beat their offer by $2,500 up to 450. So if they come in at 430, your offer becomes 432.5. They come in at 440, your offer becomes 442.5. Okay, so we have 
a great way to beat out competition, but you're also not locking in your price at 450, you could actually save 10, $20,000 depending on where those offers land. All right, so the last tool I wanna to highlight for you is concessions or a signing bonus, okay? And these can be synonymous, you know, depending on how you word it. But ultimately, this is a, uh, what I like to call a bully offer. Now, a bully offer seems a little bit intimidating, um, but we're trying to get the seller to make a quick decision because remember, in this market, time is of the essence, okay? And I played basketball growing up, you know, and my coach always told me, you know, good offense is a good defense. Now, I lived by that my whole entire life, right? If you can just play defense, prevent people from scoring, um, that's great, right? Then you can get down the court, score. Well, in real estate, that does not work. Trust me, tried it, um, it does not work. You want to be on the offense, okay? So when a house comes to market, and if we believe that this house is is a is a ten out of ten, you're in love with it. You come in, you're like, I don't, I what do I need to do to get this house? I don't want anybody else, you know, here. I don't want the open house to happen. Well, you can do what's called a bully offer. So the bully offer works just like this: is we're going to come up with some incentive. It's usually concessions. Okay. And concessions, what you would probably consider concessions would be, you know, the seller paying their buyer's closing costs. Well, that can go the other way around too. As a buyer, you can pay the seller's closing costs, right? So instead of offering a higher price or, you know, doing more on the appraisal guarantee, we can do a combination of all that and then put a, an incentive in there or a signing bonus, as I like to call it, to get the seller to make a decision within a certain time frame. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through this. So we'd write the offer just like this. In the signing bonus, we would say, if the seller accepts this offer before noon tomorrow, the buyers will pay the seller's closing cost in the amount of $5,000, right? So now they have a $5,000 incentive to accept your offer. Now, the other terms have to be great as well, right? You have to make it a, a knockout offer, like you, know, you got the appraisal guarantee in there, you got the, the flexible closing date, the occupancy if they need it, you know, laxing on the inspection, if that's important, you know, to them and the you as a buyer are willing to do so. Um, but now you have this incentive, like I'm dangling this carrot it says, I'll give you this chunk of money. If you just accept our offer right now, it works. We've gotten many, many offers accepted with that strategy alone. All of these combined are great. Now, the last thing I want to share with you is the reason we get so many offers accepted is because we're asking the questions to the listing agent. Now, if your agent is not reaching out to the listing agent, having a conversation and fighting for this information for you to know how to craft your offer, like I said in the beginning of the video, you're at a disservice, right? You're already handicapped in the market. So make sure you select an agent that is going to fight tooth and nail for you and knows how to navigate this market. So hopefully this information helps you guys. And hey, if you're moving here in one month or one year from now, do not hesitate to give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, or our favorite, schedule that Zoom link down below. Be happy to meet with you via Zoom, You know, answer any questions you have, and ultimately match you up with the ideal lifestyle. All right, we've been getting a lot of questions about the market and just how to navigate this. So again, I wanted to make this video, you know, highlighting all these different tools that you can use in your tool belt, um, talk about the market, and just invite you to explore if now is a good time for you to buy. So we got a ton of other videos on the channel from vlog tours to property tours. So go explore, enjoy, and we'll catch you on the next one.